first time I stepped in front of a microphone, I was 12. And Ooh. I said, this is the way I want to live my life. It was great. It was this beautiful studio, mm-hmm. downtown Dallas. Uh, right next door, they were doing an ABC sports promo. And I'm like, that's really cool. And how do I do that? And, uh, you know, some <laughs> years later, here I am. And I've I got a bunch of trophies on my shelf. i got 60, almost 60 books on Audible. Man. I've done video games. I've done uh, movies, commercials. Welcome to the Who You Know Show, where what you know is important. Wait, no, it's not. Who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. I'm super excited because we're at the Video Marketing World Conference today, and this episode is brought to you by Real News PR. And I've got a very special guest with us today. I'm talking about next level, okay? Let me tell you who I got. I got Daniel Pins in the house, and Daniel is an Emmy award-winning multimedia professional with a history of writing, directing, shooting, live event managing, and editing services. Guys, welcome to the stage, Daniel Pins. Let's go, man. Thank you. Wow, so like you got a couple Emmys. Tell me about that. I just want to know how you get that trophy, man. That's what I um, want. You you spend uh, you spend ten years in a newsroom. When I started, <laughs> I didn't have gray hair. Oh. By the time I left, I had plenty of gray hair. Okay, so you're saying it may not be worth the. You know, it's okay. So uh, <laughs> I, I used to describe it. To, uh, describe it once to an intern. She said, "What's it like working in a newsroom?" And I said, "Well, it's kind of like working in a mash unit. You know, oh. sometimes there are bullets literally flying past your head, oh. and sometimes you're playing golf. You know, putting around the the, the newsroom. You know what she said to me? What's what's, what's mash? What's mash? Uh, Only the number one TV show. Yeah, is that the song? Yeah. Is that too much for a needle drop? We have to pay copyright. I don't know. You know, and you do voiceover, right? And so, is that how you got your Emmy? Was through voiceover work, or what? What did you do for your Emmy? No, for my Emmys, I was working with the Special Projects and Investigation Team with CBS, and we did a bunch. We did those stories that you know, tonight at ten o'clock. The governor of Texas has done something we don't like, so we'll tell you all about it. We'll tell you what you don't want to know that he did that he didn't maybe really do. And and I did the I was editing and graphic design and and a bunch of different production stuff. Wow. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Do you Hmm. have a show? Do you have a podcast of your own? I do not. I do a lot of audiobook narration for other people. Wow. Uh, you know, other people put their words in my mouth, and I'm really bad about putting my own words in my what? mouth. What? Dude, come on, man. We got to get your story out there, man. I well, love that's that. That's why I'm here right well, now. I know. I know. I love that. Well, I mean, because you do. I'm, I'm sitting here mm-hmm. listening to you, and I'm like, wow, this guy's got a voice. You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's get this thing out there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? First time I stepped in front of a microphone, I was 12. And Ooh. I said, this is the way I want to live my life. It was great. It was this beautiful studio, mm-hmm. downtown Dallas. Uh, right next door, they were doing an ABC sports promo. And I'm like, that's really cool. And how do I do that? And, uh, you know, some <laughs> years later... Here I am, and I've I got a bunch of trophies on my shelf. I got sixty, almost sixty books on Audible. Man. I've done video games. I've done uh, movies, commercials. Yeah, you said like Dragon Ball Z and all that kind of. Did some Dragon. Funny story about Dragon Ball Z. For the longest time, I was. You know how? Um, yeah, what's his name? Uh, Cliff Clavin on Cheers. He was like Pixar's guy. He showed up in every one of their shows. Yeah. Uh, for the longest time, I showed up in every Dragon Ball episode as a reporter. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Because I had the voice, this terrible thing is happening downtown and all these fighters are showing up and I'm the reporter voice that's going to tell you all about it. Wow. I'm like, great, keep calling me back, but I'd love to be a bigger character, you know, but uh, hey, I'll take the recurring gig when I can get it. Dude, that's freaking sweet, man. I love that. So um, let me ask you this. Uh, you said you started, you got a mic at mm-hmm. 12. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, and you knew right off the bat. This is what you wanted to do? It was just amazingly cool. You know, somebody pays me just to talk? That's awesome. When did you get your first paid gig? That was my first paid gig. At 12? At 12 years old. Holy smokes. Yeah. It was was for a company out of Japan who was trying to teach kids how to speak English. Mm. So it was the, see the ball. 
the ball is blue. Oh. And it was me and a couple, I was at the Dallas Theater Center in the teen children's program, and they called a bunch of us in. And the best part of it was I was doing so well, one of the other kids couldn't get his lines out. So they called me back into the booth to do his lines as well as my lines. I'm like, yeah. That's cool. So do you audition for like, um, you know, those Pixar movies and stuff like that? Do you do any of that? I audition for everything I can put my voice out there for. And it is horribly competitive and it's done nothing but get worse. Because anybody who's got a microphone and a halfway decent computer... You can be trying to play in the same space that uh, professionals with studio uh, quality stuff are, right. are, are playing in. Wow. Well, uh, that's a great um, segue for our uh, career changer audience. Hey, maybe there's a career opportunity for you. You didn't, you know, you didn't know you had that gift. Everybody ever said you had a radio voice or, or a face for radio. Maybe you're thinking like, hey, I can make some bucks with this. But you're saying it is competitive. Very much so. Do you so. know uh, a lady named Rolanda Watts? Mm, you ever I heard of her? I can't say I've made her acquaintance. Rolanda Watts is a, is a voiceover coach. She actually had a show in the 90s with uh, Jerry Springer and mm-hmm. Mari Povich, and she had uh, the Rolanda Watts show. And uh, she ended up quitting that show after a couple of years um, because she didn't like the way those 90s. Uh, uh, shows were going with mm-hmm. all the drama, and they would bring "Who's Your Baby Mama" and, mm-hmm. and getting people to fight. And she said, one uh, on one show, uh, somebody came out and spit on. Mm. Yeah, they were trying to f- create drama. Anyway, so she she quit. Now she does a lot of voiceover work, and uh, she's she's done a lot of that cartoons and. And it's, so I thought maybe I, you know small world. So there there are some communities um, when you're working out of L.A. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've read Rob, Rob Paulson's book. He did uh, uh, Pinky and the Brain among other oh, things. Oh, Pinky and the Brain. He's, brain, he's brain, got a brain. great book and he Love narrates that. it himself. And he tells all these stories about these different communities. And everybody knows everybody in this community, mm-hmm. and everybody knows everybody in this community, but they don't always cross pollinate. Sure. Well, so. well, and I could imagine voiceover might be difficult because. You're not always front of the house getting the credit, right? Mm-hmm. People can hear you, but they don't know who's they that They don't voice. know who you are. And, and Unless they, I guess, watch the credits. <laughs> and, and now, I mean, it used to be back in the day. Back in the day. You'd all come <laughs> in together. In my time. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd come together in one large group, right? And right. each person would, you know, you'd all be mic'd together and they'd mix it all together. Mm. It's not like that anymore. You do your lines. You do it at home. You can do it at home. I've got a, a studio in my home yeah. uh, with these headphones, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, and and you send your lines in, or you uh, put a, a remote line in, and they they talk you through it. But you don't actually get to see or interact with all of the other people. Mm. And I really do miss some of that because yeah. you have that chance to, to make connections. Well, how about this conference, right? How, what's been, you know, the connections that you've made here? You made any good, valuable networking connections here? Um, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm sitting right here hey. in front of you. So I'm delighted to be here. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Love that. Um, and, and getting to know, it's, it's really tough when you're good at what you do and it comes relatively easily to you. It's very hard to value that. And see yourself through other people's eyes. And mm. it's lovely to come to to learn people who work in other lines of work and go, oh, yeah, I can bring a lot of value to this place. So Absolutely. That's why I'm really glad I'm here. Well, that's great. Well, um, let me ask you this. What do you think has been at Video Marketing World this year? What's been your biggest takeaway? If you were to go home and take action on something that you've learned here today or at the, your time at this conference, what do you think that would be? I think it's a, a change of mindset mm. um, as, as growing up as an actor and then getting into uh, corporate production and news. I've done a ton of stuff for other people. I've got content out there for 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> I don't have a lot of stuff for myself. Got it. Right. And so uh, I was just talking about this this morning. I went back. I wrote a book five years ago. I put it out there, didn't really do very much, but I record audiobooks for goodness sake. Why don't I record my own book? And so I went back and I finally got past that hurdle and laid down the first chapter of that last night, coming soon to stores near you. Yeah, see, that's what I was talking about when I first heard you start speaking. I was like, what was the question I asked you? So you got a podcast, right? Like, 
You should have a freaking podcast. Come on, man. Let's go. I just need good people to talk to. Hey, do you live here in Dallas? I do live here in Dallas. I, okay. I uh, grew up here uh, in Richardson. And the irony is in the company I work for now, I can literally see the house I grew up in from the eighth floor window where I'm working now. Wow. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then my mom's like, why don't you ever come over? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, well, hey, listen, I'll get you set up with Real News PR. And listen, they'll get you a podcast started like that, okay? Because you need to get your message out there. And you know what's cool about podcasting is that your audio books, right? That that can come from your podcast, by the way. You can repurpose your podcast into an audio book. It can be repurposed into YouTube videos. It can be repurposed into the short form, form clips. All kinds of things. The, you can do beast, it all with it. The beast must be fed, and it will devour all the content you can put out there. Mm. And as much as you can get, and will still be hungry for more. Mm. So, the beast. Yeah, the beast. So I've been making a lot of meals for other people. I need to make some meals for my own. Absolutely. I'm going to give you a mic drop for that, Ooh. man. Let's go. Uh, mic nice. drop. Yeah, it's time to make some meals for yourself. You know, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you, for those listening right now, maybe you've been thinking, you know, you're working in corporate America and you've been working and giving your skill set away for, for pay, right? You've been giving it to, to this company. And you know what? Maybe it's time for you, too. Maybe it's time for you to make some meals for yourself. All right? Well said. Right? I got a lot of uh, folks. The, the biggest audience that I get to serve is actually senior level executives. Who get let go mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with ageism okay and they have a hard time getting back to work and it actually ends up taking them you know typically a year to two years to get back to where they were mm -hmm. and i'm like listen if you took that two years and put it in yourself instead of wasting it in the search right because that two years can like eat your bankroll it can do a lot to you so i'm like Put it in yourself. Invest it in yourself. Hire yourself. If they won't hire you, hire yourself. Mm -hmm. well, I, uh, an old boss that I used to work with um, got downsized as a result of COVID. Mm. And I've been telling him, look, you've got all this information. Go out there. Write a book. Do, I'll help you make a recording. Yeah. Not there yet, but I think I finally got him convinced. Well, well, good. I'm glad that you said that. And it is tough. It is tough because if all you know is all you know, then you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't know what you don't know, well, then you definitely don't know. <laughs> Make sense? I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, let me ask you this. What, um, what are you looking for now? What's next for you? You've got Emmys. You're crushing it. Your voiceover. Your Dragon Ball Z. What's next for you? The next mountain I want to climb? Absolutely. I want, I want a Grammy. Grammy. I want a Grammy Award. Uh, there a lot of spoken artist stuff. I came this close to I was nominated for uh, fiction best audiobook uh, nice. last year by uh, a, a voice artists association I was one of seven finished nominees for a solo work there and I narrated with an author by the name of David Gerald I don't know if your audience has heard of him he wrote for the original Star Trek series he's oh. the one who created the tribbles the trouble with tribbles Wow and I did a horror, horror audiobook narration with him. Wow. And the, the guy who beat me out was a fully produced audio drama mm. with multiple actors and special effects and music and everything. And I'm like, oh, it's so close. Uh, so maybe next year. Wow. Well, hey, you still did that. I mean, I, I love that you got to work with that guy from Star Trek and all of that and put all that together. And it sounds really interesting. You got me thinking because um, I, I, I'm... I'm preaching, but I need to uh, I need to walk the walk too. I need a book, you know, and I need an audio book. You know what I'm saying? So there's some things that I don't have in my current arsenal, and that's one of them. That's the next step for me is a book. The great part about that mm -hmm. is it doesn't matter what line of work you're in, right? You can say, and if you've read my book, it's available on audio or on Audible.com. Look up my name, Daniel Penz, P-E-N-Z. You've got you've got validation right there. Yeah. You hey look I've done this I'm a master of this content let yep. me share it with you it doesn't matter if it's in the particular thing that you're talking to this other person about you're already verified I can say look at my statues look at my IMDb page I've done all this other stuff so trust me I can do this quality work for you I love it I mean that's the next step I'm telling you for me because I got the uh, you know speaker you know coach thing going but I need the speaker author coach right mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna need you 
to do the voiceover because I could do my own. Should I do my own? Do you recommend people do their own? If you are an experienced broadcast professional, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. But if you're not, if mm. content is your your place of expertise, your place of power, then focus on the content. Let professionals make the the recordings for yeah, you. Yeah, listen, I can't barely read, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, I, I mess stuff up. I can't. I, I get typos and, you know, listen, hey, grammar's not my thing. I can talk, though. <laughs> <laughs> Me talk pretty one day. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, this has been an amazing time getting to know you. I think it's um, it's important for people to understand that, you know, there's a next level. And I'm excited to see your next level. And I want to see you, um, not the Grammy. No, the Grammy. I, I want to see a Grammy. That'd be nice. Manifest it. Say, I'm going to see a Grammy. I'm going to see it. You're going to see a Grammy. I want you to see that Grammy. We can get that Grammy. Come back on this show. I, I'll be right there. Right. You And then we'll recap this one. And we'll talk about it, right? Done. That's that's it right there. What's the best way for the audience to get in touch with you and to connect with everything that you're doing? Everything I'm doing is at PennsTV.com. P-E-N-Z-T-V.com. Uh, spelled like Mercedes-Benz, but with a P in front of it. And uh, you can also look up. I've got about 60 books on Audible.com. 60 books. And Good you Lord. can, uh, with a number of different authors, and you can also look up my IMDb page where you'll see a bunch of the anime and the, the video games that I've done. That is awesome. Man, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Guys, that's the show. It's all about who you know Woo! and a little cash flow. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.